Hey Trick Class, I want to show you this problem from the 11.5 homework set. And here we're talking about rotation of axes. And I want you to see what we mean by rotation of axes. So what I've got here is the function or the equation written over here, but I have an A in front of the XY term. So when we've uh, seen these in, in the previous sections, there hasn't been an X times Y. The X's have been separated from the Y's. There's been X squareds and X's and y squareds and y's, and when we see those, it's easy to tell what we're dealing with. Like if it's a an ellipse or a hyperbola, just by the the signs of the uh, in front of the x squared and y squared. So they're the same. So we've been saying, oh, well, that's a, an ellipse or a circle in this case, since they have the exact same number in front of them uh, along with the sign. But when we have an x y term, that changes. So the x y term, and you'll see why we call it rotation of axes. As I make a bigger you can see this stretching that takes place. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit. The stretching that takes place, in, so that's an ellipse, like we've seen uh, ellipses in the course, but not with the major axis and the minor axis, some uh, direction other than horizontal and vertical. And so we see now that this, the, the major axis is along a slanted line, and the minor axis is, is a line perpendicular to that. So the, the axis that we're used to, the positive x-axis, has been rotated. We got this rotation of what we're used to by, by some angle. And so that's what we mean by a rotation of axes. Now, but watch also what happens as I stretch this out. As I continue to stretch it, eventually that ellipse shape breaks apart and it becomes like two parallel lines. And then they start to bend away from each other rather than towards each other. And we actually start to see a hyperbola, even though we start off with what looks to be, you know, again, if that, a, that XY term wasn't there, was circular or elliptical like, the, like we've seen in past sections. So when we have an XY term, it's not as easy. It's not just straightforward. What am I looking at? Is it, is it uh, an ellipse? Is it a hyperbola? It's not just looking at those X squared terms and Y squared terms anymore. Now you have to consider that XY term. So in these problems at the beginning of the section, uh, of this set of homework, we don't have any xy terms. So this is x squared, this is x. There is no xy term. So I can confidently say, well, this is parabola because one of them is squared and the other one is not squared. This is an ellipse because they're both squared and they're both positive. They have the same sign. So I'm looking at an ellipse. All right, this is y squared, this is x squared. So this is a hyperbola because they have opposite signs. So that's what we've been able to do up until this point and all the questions that we've seen that don't have an xy term, that's the case. All right, but now that we have an xy term, we gotta be careful because it's not just the signs in front of the, the values anymore. So we're gonna look at these transformations. So these are the things that we have to, to solve. So we take the, um, the value a, that is the value in front of x squared is a, which is one in this case. The value in front of the xy term is b, which is 12, and the value in front of the y squared term is c, and then we plug those into this equation. So we end up with the cotangent of twice the rotation angle that we're after needs to satisfy this equation where a, again, which is the number in front of x squared, which is 1, minus c, the number in front of y squared, which is also 1, divided by 2 times b, which is 12, uh, will give us our angle. Now, 1 minus 1 is 0, so it doesn't matter. The bottom's 24. We're going to get 0 here. So the cotangent of 2 theta is equal to 0. All right. Remember that um, when cotangent is equal to 0, the tangent of that same angle defined. And this happens when the angle, which is the stuff that's inside a tangent, equal to 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So that means theta here would be pi over 4 or 45 degrees. And so that's what we're going to rotate. That's the angle that we're going to rotate our x coordinate by. So x equals this x prime, the cosine of pi over 4 minus y prime times the sine of pi over 4. That'll give us our x coordinate. And then for y, we do the same, except we s switch the sine and cosine and it becomes addition in the middle. So this is the sine of the pi over 4 that we just found. We add it to the y prime. All right, cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, all right, as is the, the sine. All right, so there's all those square roots of 2s over 2s in there, and that's 
that's the correct answer. And, and it looks like, okay, well, what is that? I, that's it. That's, that's all there is to this question. Um, the, and again, they don't go into great detail about what you've just found, but I wanted you to see what it is. So, uh, the algebra is messy. Uh, it takes a lot to do it, but, um, I wanted you to see what I've done is replace this X prime with a. So everywhere you see an X prime, I've, I've substituted with an a and everywhere you see a y prime, I've substituted with a b. So all this is, is the, um, the square root of 2 over 2 times x prime minus square root of 2 over 2 times y prime. That's the new x coordinate. I'm just calling it a and b, um, just to not have the primes in there in the work. But what basically I'm doing is I'm taking all of this and replacing every x I see with it. I'm replacing every y I see with that. And when I do the algebra, and it's going to be messy because I have to square the a minus b. I have to fold that out, fold that out. So it gets expanded and we simplify. And when we do that, what happens is we end up with this formula. Now, if you look at the wording, it says, so the new um, variable does not have an xy term. So in this case, it would mean it doesn't have an ab term. Like a and b are these x prime, y primes, they're the new variables. And we don't have an A times B together, so we're, we don't have a rotation. So here's what I had in Desmos with this being a 12. I'll just replace this with a 12. We don't need that slider. I was just showing you that it transforms these things from one shape to another when we have that X, Y term in there. Uh, but this was the, the equation that I have now after the, the, trans, the, the transformation, after plugging in this for X and this for Y into our original equation. We get this, and I want you to see, again, I'm going back to, instead of a squared and b squared, I'm going back to x and y for the purposes of graphing. And what we have is this exact same hyperbola, the red one, but just along the x-axis. Right, you can see I am 0.535 is the, the distance I am away. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. From um, the origin, that is, again, if y is 0, that's solving that equation, so that's the square root of two sevenths. I just want you to see that's what that number is. That's that distance right there. So if I make a circle centered at the origin with this as its radius, that circle hits here where we started, but it also hits right here. And notice those two points are the same because we've rotated 45 degrees. So it's, it is that green hyperbola rotated by, by that angle, 45 degrees, that's producing the red one. So that's what rotation of axis is. We're coming up with what is this rotated hyperbola back on the xy plane. And that's the procedure that we need to find it. We need to find the angle that has this property in that equation. Again, where a is the number in front of x squared, b is the number in front of the xy term, and c is the number in front of the y squared term. All right, again, there's other... There's other terms. There's the, the x term, the y term, the constant term. But in this in this rotation formula to get us this rotation angle, these are the the important ones. Those first three: the square x y and the the y squared. Once we have that angle, we can plug it into this formula. Do the math, like figure out what that uh, cosine of that angle, sine of that angle are. Plug it in everywhere, and then if I replace all of that. In for the x's and I replace all of this in for the y's then I will create a for, a, a, an equation that would get me back to that hyperbola in the standard form that we're used to.